You know the private sector obeys that more than the public sector? And that's consistent with the fact that the biggest lawbreaker in America is government. Amen. Is government. So we instituted a targeted training program headed by uh, Cindy Norwood, who is herself a JAG officer, uh, in my office, uh, to train HR personnel and lawyers in local government and across state government uh, to understand and respect and enforce USERA. Now, for the lawyers, we've got to get continuing legal education credits, so it's easy to bait them. They get two hours. It's free. Um, we do these things by phone, and we recruit like crazy to get them. Uh, we also give these trainings to guardsmen and reservists. Uh, as I stand here before you, um, astonishingly, and I would have never guessed we could have gotten a number this high, we've trained over 14,000 people. 14,000. <clears throat> And this is not Virginia law that we talk about the Virginia application. So we have been, I have been talking to other attorneys general around the country about doing this themselves. This has been a wildly successful program. And one, given our call-ups, that has been very, very important in Virginia. To bringing first government into line with the law. What a concept. <laughs> um, but also, that went so well, we did expand out into the private sector. And we reached out to uh, companies all across Virginia, and we've been training their folks as well. So you know, those are bringing my private sector experiences in um, and the work I've done with veterans in the past into my role as attorney general. And we also, of course, had our July 2011 legal opinion, um, the, which holds the record for the most questions asked in one legal opinion um, about the constitutional amendment. Uh, that you all are familiar with in property tax, uh, which made it easier for veterans to obtain that real estate tax exemption because we equated um, a complete disability without the numerical rating to 100%, uh, which is as it ought to be. Um, and that eased the way with a lot of local governments. Um, also, one thing we've done in the Attorney General's office is protect the voting opportunities of a our active duty military. And that's something the State Board of Elections, even today, is looking to expand uh, further, you know, this is a history, you know, Paul mentioned John McCain's race in 2008. You know that in 2008, I've got to pick my year carefully so you know who the governor wasn't, it wasn't Bob McDonald. Um, the State Board of Elections fought counting about 2,000 ballots, military ballots, after the 08 election. And these are ballots, at least some of which, had not been sent to our military members on a timely basis in accordance with Virginia law. And our state government fought counting those ballots. Now, you might imagine how some of us reacted. I'm sure the same way you would. Well, we have uh, worked to fix that problem in state government. That's something that I came in very committed to. That's a, just an abomination. Uh, of all the people whose ballots you want to make sure you count, not that we ever don't want to get them all, but to fight counting them was astonishing. As governor, I'm going to continue the commitment you've seen out of me in the Attorney General's office, and we have a plan for Virginia's veterans, and it has seven core goals. Uh, first, our plan is going to restructure the Virginia Office of Veterans Affairs by making the office report directly to the governor instead of the Office of Homeland Security. Uh, I believe this is going to significantly improve the quality and attentiveness of our government's service to our veterans, and I believe uh, the Homeland Security function belongs in the Public Safety Secretariat. Amen. So we're going to we're going to change that structure. Um, second, our plan will support and strengthen Virginia's veterans' health care programs. Uh, we'll work with the General Assembly to continue funding programs like the Wounded Warrior Program. Uh, that has been very successful and to support the establishment of Veterans Health Care Center in Northern Virginia, where I still live. Uh, next, third, we'll take a number of concrete steps to increase employment opportunities uh, for our veterans. And just as a few examples, this is considerably more extensive, but I'm going to give you a few examples. We're going to work with technology councils and the trade industries 
uh, to capitalize on the, both the technological training and the skills obtained in military experience and smooth the transition from that military experience into a state role. Now, sometimes that can mean licenses and certifications. Uh, and one thing you'll hear me talk about with the spouses is similar, similar subject area. Uh, we want to make that a smooth and immediate transition. What I, to, to give it to you in vision form, I want to see those people jump right into the workforce and then we will backfill the certification and licensing. Don't hold our veterans up on our bureaucracy. Let the bureaucracy work to chase down our veterans and wish them luck. So, <laughs> we want to identify high demand skilled trades and develop a fast track for veterans obtaining these kind of licenses and certifications. This is also something reflected in our workforce development proposals that we've already rolled out, which have a very soft, strong focus on our veterans. Uh, work with the business community to recruit and to place veterans in those businesses while also establishing and maintaining policies to protect privacy. Um, that's important as well. Uh, this has begun in Virginia. Uh, Chairman Galante, your legislators have started this and we're going to expand it. Uh, V3, many of you have followed this. Virginia Values Veterans uh, is a good example of this. We need to continue to expand that. Um, we have a governor right now who's been very committed to uh, expanding opportunity for veterans, and we want to continue going in that direction. Uh, the fourth goal of our plans to improve and to simplify veterans' claim processing by creating comprehensive resource directory for the veterans and claim representatives. Again, this goes back to my time with Pro Bono Veterans Consortium. They worked with all of the veterans organizations. It was a great clearinghouse methodology, and we want to use that methodology to the advantage of Virginia's veterans. And we'll also allot you know, another $60,000 a year, very small amount, to make sure that 12 of our DVS agents each year uh, can take part in national level advanced training courses over the next three years, which will then allow all of the ones we have to get through that cycle of training um, so we, we can get them to the next level of competency. Um, and next, we'll take action against veterans' homelessness. This is something that the General Assembly has begun to address, and we want to make sure the Homeless Veteran Program is fully funded and meeting its goals. Uh, that's something that I certainly am committed to. Uh, I met veterans um, when I worked the overnight shift in the homeless shelter in Arlington when I was in law school. Uh, it's down there by the courthouse, for those of you that know Arlington, it's still there. And um, you all know about that problem. It's a pronounced problem. It is not a singular problem. They're not homeless because they're veterans. They're homeless because there are mental illness issues that they're suffering from, that there are dual diagnosis issues. And we need to attack those problems. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, um, those that do will tell you that addressing mental illness and those suffering from it has been a passion of mine for over 15 years. Um, that has a lot of overlap um, with some of our wounded warriors. So that's something that I pay close attention to. Um, the sixth goal of our plan, um, maybe the most important from an economic standpoint, and that's improving veterans education. And this is from a long-term standpoint, to launch a statewide initiative led by the governor's office to make Virginia's public colleges and universities more attractive to veterans. And there's a few different things we can do there. We want to establish veterans peer-to-peer -peer networking on every Virginia college campus. Some of them have this, but they do not all have this. And they should. They should. And we'll make sure that happens. We're going to ensure that every college campus has a full-time staff member who is trained and knowledgeable on <laughs> veterans' programs and benefits. Um, doesn't have to be one whole full-time person, but there needs to always be one person there trained to handle these issues for their veteran students. Uh, we'll also work with DVS to launch a statewide campaign to raise awareness about alternatives to how to use the GI Bill benefits to pay for college and for, for workforce training. Um, and in our, again, in our workforce development, we're looking at opening up these opportunities as well with the state dollars that we're putting in. Uh, finally, our plan will support military spouses and dependents. Um, you know, we always rattle off the numbers of veterans, but just as uh, we pay attention to each of you all individually, we know that your service has been family service, uh, and we respect that. We respect that, and we want to honor that. We also want to make it easier. Um, we want to make it easier. 
And sometimes we forget the sacrifices that spouses and families make for our, for our service members and for us uh, so that that service can take place. We have to make sure we're looking out for them. Our plan will support second round of the constitutional amendment. It's been through once for real estate property tax exemption, entire exemption for the spouses of our military members killed in action. Um, this, I anticipate, will go through in 2014. Uh, certainly your elected folks here are leaders in that effort. Uh, that's something that I will strongly support. We'll offer a two-year provisional teaching license uh, to those military spouses who hold licenses from other states so they can teach in our schools right away, immediately. Amen. Um, with, the, with the short duration of some deployments uh, to Virginia, uh, waiting around one school year is really useless for that family. Um, and like I said, we want to get them in and let the bureaucracy catch up with them. Uh, I trust other states. Okay? Now, Even California? I, I wish. Uh, you know what? If you can get a teaching license in California, God bless you. Um, but yes. Yes, even California. <laughs> uh, frankly, I wish there was more respect for our states in government today. Um, we'd solve a lot of our other problems. But I trust our sister states, and I want to ease the way for the families of our service members, our active duty service members. Uh, this is just one example. The teaching licensure is an easy one to point to. Um, there's a million other things I could name. Nursing, Sandy in the back of the room. Um, there are other things as well, but th that concept we want to take to support our military families so they can support their families um, because we all know how important that is. We all know how important it is. So these are just a few components of our plans. I think I have the track record to demonstrate the credibility to pursue these. Um, I have four elections under my belt, and the one thing I can say that my opponent is what you see is what you get. And I'll say the same thing in the next room that I said in this room. Also a difference in this race. Um, and I have a track record on issues that, are, that matter to veterans. And I think in ways that, um, and at times when it wasn't for anything other than to help the person I was working with, uh, I have, uh, I think, fulfilled some of what I believe are the prerequisites to ask the people of Virginia, including our veterans, to entrust me with the governorship. And I appreciate y'all's support and your help in pursuing that. And I hope you'll take some time to, to read the much more extensive packet we put together to explain all of this. And please share this with your fellow veterans. Um, we want every single Virginian to vote. But the drop off in these state races is very significant. Uh, I'm not happy about that. You all can help us get more veterans out to vote. Virginia matters for veterans. And we care an awful lot about our veterans. We'd like to see all 837,000 of them out there voting. Uh, and you all can help with that. And I hope you will. And when you do, please put in a good word for us. And if you have questions or you have other suggestions, we're wide open to you, as many of you know. And many of you know Rich, Sandy, uh, Noah Wall is here, kind of running in and out over here. Uh, off to my right, um, thus the running. I can't keep track where he is. And, um, and we'd love to have your input. We'd love to have your support in this race. I'm very honored to have the support of the folks who are, who are here. Um, I, I joke with the two colonels, uh, Air Force and Army here. Air Force represents me in the House of Delegates. And, and actually, um, the creek behind my house yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm pointing to a different one. Uh, the creek behind my house divides the district between Air Force Colonel and Army Colonel. And uh, with the rain this week, I'm actually a little farther from Scott <laughs> uh, than I was earlier this week. And then, of course, well, the EPA will be in your backyard. <laughs> Please. I don't think they'll come in my backyard. Uh, but, uh, and of course, uh, Dick Black, who was one of the first people to jump out and help me run uh, for the state Senate um, uh, 11 years ago. <clears throat> Uh, a little bit more. And um, uh, I don't think we ever really thought we'd be sitting here, Dick, when we were sitting uh, talking about a state senate race. But I thought you would be here. <laughs> well, 
you're crazier than me, but of course, <laughs> of course I'm standing here. So. But I, I appreciate their support. I'm very honored to have it. And for every single one of you in this room, I appreciate your service. Um, when it comes to these issues, uh, I promise you this. Uh, I will honor your service by keeping my word. Thank you.